Hello on Crypto Tax Awareness Week, and I'm joined by Ernesto. Uh, he is the head of business uh, development at Dash. Welcome, Ernesto. Hi, Daniel. Hi, everyone. It's a pleasure to be here. Um, I'm really excited to uh, begin uh, making content for this cooperation with Send Ledger. I know it's going to be really, really useful to everyone out there. So it's great. Well, we're super excited to uh, to be partners with you guys, and thank you for joining us uh, during this special week. Um, wanted to uh, uh, focus this conversation uh, short and quick about what it's like to accept crypto as a merchant. And I know that Dash uh, is very strong in this area, and would love to kick it kick it off like that. Yeah, um, like I was telling you in the in the previous part of our conversation, Dash means digital cash. We've been pushing forward the space for uh, living on crypto since 2015, basically since our inception. And we've tried a lot of different ways to um, enable uh, the freedom that, that you can have by, by using crypto. We've tried all over the world, literally. We've had communities uh, do uh, business development and growth adoption in, in Brazil, in Thailand, in Germany in Venezuela, in the U.S. And today we're going to be talking about a lot of these experiences and, and what we've learned. So why don't we, uh, why don't we, that's a great segue, why don't we get started and uh, tell us what, uh, what are some of the new developments on, uh, on what it's like. Uh, I, as a merchant, I'm a brand new merchant, uh, uh, have never accepted crypto. Uh, I do have a, uh, uh, customers that come into my, into my door. Uh, what is a good way for me to uh, to say, I want to open doors to accepting crypto. Yeah. Well, um, the first part is that you have to understand as a merchant that this is not a complex uh, technological task for you. It can be as simple as downloading an app and it can go as uh, advanced as integrating it into your system. But you can try without having to invest anything in, 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 in the, all the technology stack that you have in your, in your site. The first thing that we recommend to anyone that wants to try is they can download an app and they can put a, a sticker on their front and say, hey, we accept Bitcoin, we accept Dash. And then when somebody comes and you know, they want to pay, that is another, an alternative payments method. Once people try it and they see that they like it and there's demand and it just pushes them to be known as a forward-looking merchant, then they can go forward and integrate one of the many other methods. There are things or there are solutions that work as a stand-up website that you can pull up or there are some more advanced solutions that integrate into your system and you directly at the checkout, you select crypto as the option. If you want, if you let me share my screen, I'll okay. share you one of the most modern looking uh, integrations. Let me know when it's live so I can press play. Cool. So this is an integration we did back in 2020 in a supermarket chain in Venezuela. I went up to the cashier. I selected what I wanted to pay. They told me the amount. And then I said I was going to pay in Dash. And then this is what you see as a user when this happened, uh -huh. uh, they share the amount and then that creates a QR code. I go into my Dash wallet and I just press uh, OK and input my password. I click send and then, you know, within seconds, the merchant already received the payment. And this is very modern and it's very interesting because it's one of the most beautiful ways I have seen to join the crypto world with the physical legacy retailer methods. Um, as you can see here, the payment took a couple of seconds and then the confirmation took a little bit more because, you know, sometimes the internet can be slow and whatever, but it's, it, it, this allows pretty much anyone to start accepting crypto in the same way they take credit cards. And there are benefits to this in different geographies. So what, what would be the, the 
biggest reason for me to use Dash versus Ethereum uh, as a method of payment or Bitcoin? Yeah, well, uh, Dash is uh, digital cash. is meant to be uh, fast and not expensive as a payment method. So, for example, with Ethereum, you can have the gas fee spike and then you might end up paying, you know, five, six dollars for a twenty dollar transaction. But with Dash, it's usually one twentieth of a penny. So it's it's fast. I mean, we are designed to be digital cash. Bitcoin is a great store of value. It's not so good for payments. And when you use another layer two, you always have to top it up. So there's a little bit more complexity. I believe that crypto as a whole, as an industry, just has different solutions that complement each other. And for this particular use case, I've, I've been delighted to use Dash. So that that actually reminds me a lot of a uh, before joining Zen Ledger, uh, I was uh, head of engineering services and enterprise onboarding at BitPay, and that's exactly what BitPay does. They they are the largest in the world when it comes to crypto acceptance. Uh, they're not specific to a particular coin, um, so Dash should be inside of Bitcoin of, of BitPay. Uh, so when I go and I yeah. make a payment, uh, when I go and make a payment to one of the merchants, I can then very easily. Uh, uh, select uh, my for my balance from Dash and and pay the bit pay invoice. Uh, I know there's uh, a, a number of uh, a number of different merchants uh, that utilize uh, uh, BitPay globally, uh, uh, and now they're they've released uh, a partnership with Verifone uh, over a, a little bit over a year ago. I was actually part of that uh, integration. I led that integration in a. And it really is an amazing, amazing uh, uh, leap forward to be able to go into a store and say, I want to make a transaction using crypto. Um, however, one of the challenges that, uh, that I know were experienced was the fact that a lot of these devices were antiquated, uh, meaning uh, they, they had to be upgraded to the latest version in order for, uh, for the the new system that embraces crypto from within Verifo would actually uh, be able to be rolled out and be able to accept. So from from your perspective, uh, from the partners that you guys have, uh, what would you say are some of the uh, some of the new solutions that are that are being rolled out uh, or being worked on as we speak to be able to make that leap, uh, whether it's in the U.S. or other areas of the world, so that people can more easily, like our parents, can more easily say, uh, I want to utilize uh, this, new, this new method of payment and pay for goods and services. Yeah. I'm, I'm finishing writing a paper on the current state or my thoughts on the current state of crypto. And, and there's different use cases that are making crypto popular or are providing solutions to people. So all of this is to tell you that depending on where you are and the situation you are in, crypto can be another option. Uh, we, we've mentioned Latin America and, and you've seen this. Colombia is a place with a lot of banking restrictions. Um, the, for different reasons, it's not easy to send money in or out of Colombia, and you have to prove that you actually own the money, and, and it, it's the opposite. Well, you, you're guilty until proven innocent, and then, oh yeah, then you can move the money. Well, crypto would allow you to send 50 20 30 dollars $100 to your family in need in the moment, and they would receive it immediately, and they could go and do it. Same thing happened with Venezuela, but for another reason. Because of the financial collapse, people do not want to keep their bolivars because they're losing value every day. And then they look for other alternatives of use. This uh, integration that I showed you is literally what I've seen some of my family members, what I taught some of my family members do whenever they want to buy groceries. They tell me, hey, Ernest, I'm going to pay $125 so I can send the amount exactly when they're going to pay and then they go and pay. So that's one solution that's for broken markets. Then for markets that are, you know, tech savvy, there's always a niche. And right now the cryptocurrency niche is growing. And we have seen a lot of news and a lot of people, especially in the past bull market of people that are accepting crypto. I met a club owner in Miami that he was telling us that, you know, they processed, 
I think it was six or four million dollars in crypto transactions. So this puts you as a forward looking place and people that are forward looking will probably be driven into you. And then, you know, there's the artists that started selling NFTs and they also would get some crypto income. So that's the bucket of people that are earning in crypto. So people like to see as a black or white type of situation in crypto. But my perception is that down the future, cryptocurrencies are going to grow more into an alternative for the current financial system, and they will serve us better in some situations. I can definitely imagine when you mentioned the, the, the telephone company accepting crypto, that this is a way that I can top up my family's phone from another side of the world, or if I'm traveling, I can top it up because maybe I don't have the local currency. It's all about solutions. Man. Yeah. So on that on that specific one of the uh, one of the first uh, uh, big uh, uh, enterprises that uh, that I got to on board um, and set up was AT and T, uh, uh, where I can very easily through BitPay be able to top up my AT and T bill or pay my AT and AT and T uh, cell phone bill phone bill. So a question: Since we're talking about tax week and, and tax awareness, uh, I would love to ask you um, one last question. Mm -hmm. On this subject, which is uh, what has been one of the challenges that you have seen uh, uh, or questions that that uh, that, uh, that you've you've heard the most most frequently from CFOs uh, as challenges and why uh, crypto should not be embraced or they cannot even embrace crypto within their business. From from the technology side, is not as easy still to um, integrate in, into the systems like there are solutions out there like BTC pay server, BitPay and others that provide APIs and that are, I would say, fairly non-complex for online businesses. For offline businesses, there are still, it's not that easy. Uh, for example, that integration I showed you was done because a local exchange provided APIs and they did everything for the merchant. So, you know, you, you're providing the merchant with just another button and that button means crypto and whatever, but that's in the back end. So that is one thing. And the other one you ask about technology, but to be honest, and it's not because I'm talking to you guys, the financial people also have a lot of questions, you know, mm -hmm. how am I going to pay this? Bitcoin today was 24. Yesterday was 26. Tomorrow is going to be 30. What type of tax will I have to pay on this? Will I lose money? So there's also a, a little bit of uncertainty from finance, but my experience has been that once they take the leap and once they see, initially they want to cash everything out, but then when they see that prices tend to go up and that the total amount of sales that they get from cryptocurrencies is not that huge, they start taking a little bit more of risk and they say, well, if I hold this 1% of all my sales and I hold it over six months, I have a chance of, of making more money. So they can start, they start thinking about financial strategies. So these are two, two of the pushbacks and some of the solutions I've seen. That's, 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 that's uh, interesting to hear. And that's exactly in line with, um, with the experience that, I, that I've had in the past. And that's actually one of the reasons why I was so, um, so eager to join a, uh, uh, the Zen Ledger team, and it's because it actually solves that gap, that problem. One of the biggest problems that I, I kept hearing over and over and over uh, while I was working with these integrations, uh, when I had a, had rejections were from the CFO saying, hey, am I going to be touching the money? Uh, somebody pays with Bitcoin, will I be touched? Will, will, will my balance sheet be seeing a, a Bitcoin come in or not? Uh, if it does, then how does it how does it get put into a balance sheet? Or if it does get sold, um, how does the taxation uh, work? Or if I get uh, paid in crypto uh, and hold it for a period of time, then sell it, uh, how does all that work with the um, with the taxes? And that's exactly what uh, what Zenledger uh, helps with. Ernesto, I think this concludes our uh, short interview. Really appreciate your time. Always a pleasure to speak to you. It's my pleasure, man. Thank you, Danielle. Thank you, Baptiste. Thank you, Paul, and all the Send Ledger team 
not only for this set of interviews that we're making, but for all the work you guys are doing to push the space forward, to create solutions so people can finally find a lot of use in crypto. This is what we need. It's a pleasure.